Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining. It's a little after four o'clock. Thank you for our teaching today of the Lunar Shabbat. Happy Lunar Shabbat. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't do it. Ah, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Lunar Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Vincent P. Adams, and I am co-founder of Etz Hayim Temple and Energy Center, along with my lovely wife, Navia Leslie Adams. And again, we say Shabbat Shalom and welcome. Welcome. Uh, today's Torah portion is called Tizva. 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 Tiz. Tizva. <laughs> it's, uh, T-Z-A-B. It's actually the Hebrew letter. Um, goodness. Okay. Saudi. So, no. Um, is it Saudi? I'm having a COVID moment here. <laughs> I can tell you what it looks like. It two antennas sticking up and then it snakes down. And curls, I guess that's Saudi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. T S sound. Tis Tis Va. Tis Va. No, not Tis Va. Tis Va. The V is at the end. That's how sometimes people have a hard time saying. It's the V A H at the end. The Za. No. That's why it's, it's Tis Va. Right. It's not. It's not one syllable. It's spelled T Z A V. And Some spell. You see, they spell it differently phonetically in different places. Is you know is T A is T S V A H to Va some places. Some places. You're right. If, you know the way you pronounce it there based on the spelling, but it's also um, a T S V A H to Va or Sa or as you like to say Sav. Um, one or, one or the other. It depends on if you're from. Uh, North Israel or South Israel? <laughs> That's a joke. Okay. We'll just say Sadi. It's a Sadi. It's a Okay. Now, open your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 8. Excuse me. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8. And it runs to chapter 8, verse 36. Okay? Uh-huh. Sav or Tizva, the name translates into command. Command. Uh-huh. And I'll start. Let's read. Uh, thing. Turn it over. Let me read you the Messianic version of what this is. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the hearth, on the altar, all night until morning. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. Okay, That's a Messianic translation of... Um, let me read you uh, a rabbinical one now. Uh, let me get to that that page here. I didn't pre-mark them. Okay, I'm in the the ballpark now. I'm in the chapter. Let me get to the first part, chapter six, verse eight. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the regulation for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar hearth throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. Well, I read that without my glasses. My <laughs> I can good? see. I'm healed. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Now let's let's read King James and 
new American standard. Chapter 8, verse 6. Okay. And Moses, what is chap, chapter 6, verse 8? That's right. Okay. Keep turning those around. Chapter 6, verse 8. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night until the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. The New American Standards says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law for the burnt offering. The burnt offering itself shall remain on the hearth on the altar all night until the morning and the fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it now this is one of those Torah portions where the word that names a particular portion actually occurs on the second verse okay. and usually when that happens uh, the first verse will be, you know, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, that's usually uh, the first ver verse. And then, bam, you know, verse 2, right there, is the first word. On, uh, well, the, not verse 2, is actually verse 9. It says, command Aaron and his sons, command, that word in Hebrew is Tizva or Zav. Okay? And remember I told you one way to, you know, to crack the code, each, the first verse and sometimes the second verse of every, that begins every Torah portion is really a code for healing. And if you meditate on that verse by reading it in Hebrew, just scan it. You don't have to know what letter is what you know we're just scanning the symbols as it is mm -hmm. will bring healing into that area that it was designed to to heal if you can read it in hebrew you know at, or at least pronounce the letter even if you don't know what the words mean it's very easy to learn how to pronounce one of these i have done it in the past but it's been several years since I taught a class on how to read Hebrew. If you can read it, it's um, I think it's even more powerful mm -hmm. to hear it. You know, to see it is powerful. To hear it is even more powerful. You know, and if you're the one speaking it, oh, fantastic! And if you understand the words, Amen. like I said, it, it it just keep you keep going into a deeper level and a higher level at the same time. So, Tzva or Zav, depending on your pronunciation. And remember, this is about healing. And I've told you that in order to crack the code, if you're having any difficulty, read the first verse after the, we'll read the, the verse immediately following the first verse of the portion. And in this case, combine verses uh, 8 and 9 and then read verse 10. Or read the verse immediately preceding mm -hmm. the beginning of the Torah portion, which will actually be the last verse of the previous week to help you with that code. And this one is relatively easy. Um, at least it's getting easier to me as I, I go along and I get deeper and deeper into this. We are on, let's see here. We are on, we are in on the 25th week. This is the 25th 
Torah portion. We're almost halfway through the, uh, the Torah portions, which is good because we're coming up on Nisan, and Nisan is the first six months of the year, depending on your perspective, or the last six months of the year, depending on your perspective. Uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. I've done it over the years. It's very confusing. There's a lot of information out there about that. It doesn't matter what your perspective is. Um, you, you're going to do the same thing. Okay? okay? Now, this is, I believe, let's see what this is. Going back to Mishpatim, to Mishpatim, in the book of Exodus, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the eighth straight verse that deals with the healing of the, the head or from the neck up or neurological issues and conditions. Eight straight tour portions on that. That's, that's very, very... Uh, significant. That's one third of the Torah portions. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. what? Um, is that one third? Eight to sixteen? Yeah, about one, one about one third of the Torah portions thus far deal about or refer to healing of the head or neurological issues. So that's pretty profound. Uh, that the Bible, that the Torah portions devote that much time to neurological issues or the healing of the head, the eyes, okay, the ears, the vocal cords. But when you, if you know a little bit about anatomy, it's very apropos. We have the penile gland, you know, right here to, in the crown of the brain in the frontal lobes we have the um, right behind the third eye we have the pituitary gland which is you know called the master gland of the body its secretions affects all the other glands in the body and then we have the thyroid which is ex extremely important mm -hmm. to your physiology the thyroid gland. So you've got approximately oh one third of the endocrine system is located in the neck and head. And those glands are really the most important. You know, they they control the rest of the endocrine system, which produces all the hormones and proper secretions of your entire body. Yeshua said if your eye, singular, is full of light, then your whole body will be full of light. Mm -hmm. And we know now that, you know, the pituitary gland is there. And he was speaking singularly. He wasn't saying, um, he wasn't talking about, one, you know, one eye. He was talking about the third eye. And, you know, if the pituitary gland is functioning properly, it's a good chance that the rest of your glands are uh, performing at, at near uh, optimum levels. So take, you know, we, we want to take note of that fact. The other thing about this particular Torah portion, just like the, the previous seven, it is talking about a head and a heart connection. Again, we're talking about a donation. You know, we call it teruma, teruma, which means donation, korbanat, which means sacrifices, you know, tithes, whatever. And here we see again that 
An offering is at the core or essential to good health. If you have, you cannot, you know, all of these various mitzvahs that these eight Torah portions command you to do. If you don't have an offering with it, it's nothing. You can get as spiritual as you want about it. You can say, you know, and some pastors will say, well, if you don't have money, uh, donate some time, right. you know, to the church. Right. Work it. And that's, that's okay. That's fine. You know, if that's true, if that truly is the truth, you really just do not have anything to get, any money to give. Okay. But, Really, you should be giving something. Wherever you are a member of the body of Christ, that place should receive your tithes and offerings. Any other ministry, it, it is perfectly fine to send them a teruma, a teruma, a donation, a offering, or maybe some other type of, type of sacrifice. But your tithe always goes to that church, community, temple, or whatever you want to call it, where you're in regular attendance, where they know your name, where you're on the rolls. You should be giving that. And it's essential to your health. As we see from these past, uh, the, the past seven Torah portions, and now the eighth in a row, eight in a row. It, it 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 would be something if it was every two or three. That would even be something. Really, you know, doesn't diminish um, the effect or the instruction on giving. Right. But the fact that it is that it is eight in a row, I think really is just driving home the point. You need to be making korbanat sacrifices, giving to terumah or teruma donations, and of course your tithe. And it has to be from your heart. The head and heart connection. The head, what did Yeshua say? Above all, guard your heart, because out of it flow all the issues of oh, life. Always, yeah. Can't forget that. In Oriental medicine, we say the heart plays the music or the vibration for the rest of the internal organs. Mm -hmm. If your heart is playing a sour note, depending on what that note is, you're going to have kidney problems. If it's another sour note, liver problems. Whatever sour note the heart is playing will show up somewhere in your body. So guard your heart above all. One way to guard your heart is to make sure that you're following Torah with regards to giving. Oh, yeah, that's Old Testament. Okay? Yeshua said, you know, when the Pharisees said, hey, you know, we've given tithe of mint and almond and, and other things. What did Yeshua say? And this you should have done. Yeah, you should have done that. That is correct. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, well, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. He said, you should have done this. But you should not negate the weightier things of the law. The weightier things of the law. Love. Compassion. You don't give money, you know, because not because then you have a head connection, but you don't have a heart connection. You know, we're talking about a head and heart connection here. Eight straight Torah portions depicting a head and heart connection. Eight straight Torah portions depicting giving. Mm -hmm. 
and bringing your offering, bringing your korbanat, your tithes, your terumah, your teramah, to the temple. And, you know, giving from your heart, willingly. Yes, it's a command, but it's a, it's a command that you should be following joyfully, happily doing. We had the sign up at the beginning of uh, today's teaching where you can uh, donate to us, where you can do a terima. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been, been putting that up ever since we did that, you know, that particular uh, Torah portion, giving you an opportunity, because this is a healing ministry. If I don't tell you how to get healed, then what good is it? Now there are some say, "Well, he's trying to manipulate you." No, you don't have to go there. Okay. You go there all the time. Yeah, I know, but I, I, it's the you know six hundred pound gorilla in the room that everybody is ignoring. Okay. All right. Okay. I understand that, but it's it's in the word. It's in the word. Most if people, you're that, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, most people, though, who would actually appreciate what you're teaching wouldn't even think that because they're too deep in the Word. They're rooted in the Word. People, your messages are people who are already rooted in the Word. They just want more meat, in my opinion. So if, if you're talking to anyone out there who is just saved, just received Yeshua, but has never experienced a church or a minister, a pastor, at the pulpit who uh, did not take advantage of their congregation, you know, you're going to think, you know, the worst. You can think the worst if you've never seen one who did not take advantage of the congregation. You know, one thing I tell people about that, you know, it's a lesson that I follow. It is, uh, you know, you should always try to give into good ground, into a ministry that is doing, actually, doing the work. You don't want to uh, give your gifts and your sacrifices to a ministry or to a preacher who is, you know, he's sleeping with every all the women in the choir. You know, he's not really um, living for the Lord. He's right. He is the old saying. He's driving the Cadillac, and everybody else is walking mm -hmm. in the church. Nobody's nobody's getting healed, set free, and delivered, but him. Right. You know, you it, you can see things like that, but there's always on the internet or Facebook people talking about people like T.D. Jakes, Cliff Low Dollar, Fred Price, Kenneth Copeland. Um, what is it, Paula White? Oh, oh and of course, oh, they, they really rail against, um, what's the guy's name? He's down, I think he's in Houston, or is he in Dallas? Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. Really <laughs> very soft spoken, but, uh, but, but he's got a mega church. Pete. Yeah, Olson? Yeah. And Joel Olson. Joel Olson. He doesn't mimic him very well because you have to be really, really. Ah, uh, okay. Mr. Rogers, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, the Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Mr. Rogers of the faith. And they're just so jealous because there's a lot of people who like giving into those, to, you know, to their ministries. And, oh, they, they just hate the fact that he's receiving this money. Mm -hmm. They're not out there being on. I don't see anything on Facebook talking about how much money people are spending on the lottery. Right. You know, I don't see any protests on Facebook talking about how much money people drop at the casino. I don't see any, you know, and now, and I, I really hate this. I don't see anybody protesting how much money people are spending on these betting apps, these sports books. Mm -hmm. 
Now ask yourself why. Those things that I just mentioned bring in far more money than all the ministries that I mentioned combined. Yeah. Yeah. Why aren't you ticked off at them? Why is it that if the men and women of God are doing well financially, it, it just drives certain people nuts? Why is that? Why, you know, if people want to support various ministries, isn't that kind of their own business? They're not taking money out, uh, you know, out of your pocket. You know, you know, the people who are protesting this and whining and crying about it and got all these exotic posts, you know, where they put all these graphics into the, you know, they put a lot of time into, you know, that's got to be the devil. Yeah. Absolutely. That has to be the devil. Has to be. Mm-hmm. Because... They're not saying anything about the other, you know, things that I mentioned. That's okay. No problem. Go right ahead. Yeah. But I, I, I think I see something at least every week, if not every day on Facebook, where they put a certain man or, or woman of God down because they have success. Because their ministries are flourishing. It, this is about a head and heart connection. Now, we see here, we haven't even talked, well, we've touched on it, we danced around it a little bit. Ask that age old question what part of the body? Is this Torah portion referencing in terms of healing? You want to take a shot? For a chance to win what's behind door number one or whatever? Right behind door number one. Okay. And tell us why. We're really focusing on verse two, correct? Well, it's actually verse nine. Oh, verse nine? Yeah, because uh, the Torah portion begins in chapter six, verse eight. Verse eight is the first verse of the Torah portion, okay, which is different. verse 8. For some reason, in Chabad.org, it's verse 2. But is the man Aaron and the son saying this is the law of the burnt offering? Are you reading? What verse are you reading? Leviticus 6, 2. Okay, yeah. Or for me, it would be Leviticus 6, 9. That's interesting. That, I never okay. knew it changed. Command Aaron and his sons. Is that how it began? Yes, is it. Same okay. Yep. That's actually verse 9. Okay. Well, That's verse it. 9 in King James in the New American Standard. Let me just. You might be mentioning something that I didn't okay. take note of when I was um, reading because it just has to the first verse up there. But let's um, mm-hmm. you're right, okay. In rabbinical okay. in rabbinical Bibles it's okay. verse one and verse two. Interesting. In the King James, in the Christian Bible, is verse eight and nine. Wow. Okay. I I didn't notice that when I when I was reading, great. Okay. Okay. All right. We've we've got we've got that cleared up. So listen, what what is it in the messianic? Let, let's um. Okay. Let's probably we'll let's let's note. Up with the King James. Take proper know. note of that that dif- that dis- difference. All right. This thing here. Ah, uh, now I know what this special note is. It says Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8 and verse 9. And then in parenthesis, it has 1 through 2. 
comma H. Now I know it means in the he in Hebrew it's verse one and two. Oh, okay. Okay, and it's noted in uh, it's noted my messianic um, oh, books. So okay. I'm glad you noticed that. You know that's why we need each other. You know we need to meet and share things. But the words are the same, so that's good. Ooh. Let, let me look in um, the Hebrew Roots um, Bible okay. and see what verse is it in the Hebrew Roots. Okay. Too far ahead. Let's, let's get it down here. That's Leviticus. I'm about finally in Leviticus. Bear with me, just, just want to take note of that. In the Hebraic Roots Bible, which is a Christ, Christian, mm -hmm. it's verse 1 and 2. Okay. But in parentheses, it has 6, 8 and 6, 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Interesting, okay. Didn't, didn't see that before. Hmm. Very interesting anomaly there. Yeah. Let me put this marker back in it's right around next week's. Now, just a prophetic insight for that scripture. Mm -hmm. I have not done my own type of study which I would do on the word command. I would do the, what would you call when you get the numeric value in Hebrew of a word? Because sadiq, that sadiq has to mean something. That, that sadiq is important. It does. You're right. I, I didn't, now I have done that on other Torah portions. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done it lately on um, the last few Torah portions. I haven't done it lately. But of course it does. It, right. Of course it has some uh, prophetic meaning that needs to be looked into. Not only of the numeric value of each letter and the total numeric numeric value of the word itself, but the shapes of the letters used mm -hmm. will also have some deeper meaning to it as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you want to go deeper into uh, these things, you, you cor of course can and you're of course welcome. But what part of the body, let's get back to the basic question, what part of the body does this verse okay. of the Torah portion, what part of the body does it heal? It takes me to the heart. It takes you to the it heart. It takes me to the heart. Why is that? Because the word command. Command? Command has to be a, for those of obedience, with a heart of obedience. A heart of obedience, okay. And so I'm thinking when you command, God's going to command, you I mean he commanded Aaron, who was a high priest, you know, only the righteous that he got selected would he give those commands. Well, he would say command Aaron and his sons, you know, saying, and those are the high priests saying about the burnt offering. You gotta have the heart. You gotta have the heart. He can't tell them that if they didn't have the heart. You have to have an obedient heart. That's good. But remember, in verse one or verse eight, depending on what Bible you're using, first God speaks. Yeah. It says, and God spoke to Moses. Okay, so we're talking about the ears again. Okay. What did you just say? The ears. The ears the again. Ear. It says. Verse 8, okay, I'm reading King James. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Then verse 2, or verse 9 says, Command Aaron, the priest. So, God gives a command, or it is a command. He gives a command to Moses and tells him to command Aaron the priests. So this is uh, something directed to the men and women of God. Alright? Mm -hmm. 
And remember, it, um, you know, we see here that again the ears, mm -hmm. and we know what do the ears correspond to? The kidneys. The kidneys. Yeah. What do the kidneys uh, correspond to? The bones. The bones. Okay. The bone marrow. Kidneys. Okay. Yeah. You know, strong hips, strong legs. Yeah. All right. Okay. As you know, as well as good hearing and brain matter. So, cognitive abilities, mm -hmm. neurological issues, and cognitive abilities. Now, let's kind of look at that, okay? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron. So, Moses had to hear, and he had to speak. So God is obligated to give Moses good hearing, which means he's obligated to give Moses good kidneys, which means he's obligated to give Moses strong bones. He's obligated to give Moses good cognitive abilities. Now Moses then hears the command of God, and goes and relays it to Aaron. So now God is obligated to do the exact same thing for Aaron and the priests. Let's look at verse 2 or verse 9. Command Aaron and his sons. So who gets this blessing? Moses, Aaron, and his sons saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Now to help crack the code, we go one verse following the Torah portion mm -hmm. verse. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar mm -hmm. and if we were to even go a little further he later on he has to take it outside of the temple outside of the mishkan in the wilderness to a clean purse uh, a clean place yeah and dump it, bury it, and, and still letting it burn if the coals are still hot. Now if we go to the last verse of the previous Torah portion, all right, it, verse, it would be verse, verse 7, uh, and, you know, King James, And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he have done in trespassing therein. So when we see that, okay, we know that the tongue is the root of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So there's a heart connection. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Speaking. <laughs> Everybody, God speaks, Moses hears, Moses speaks, Aaron hears, Okay, Aaron speaks to his sons, and they hear. Okay, and then they command. They have then they command the people mm -hmm. to bring the burnt offering. Right. To bring you know the lamb, the ram, uh, or, or you know whatever animal it was was required for the burnt offering. So. You know, you got to have strong bones and be able to walk and arms, you, you know, because you got to, you know, drag that thing to the altar. Then it has to be slain. It has to be skinned. You know, reading the um, rabbinical commentaries, they point out the fact that all of the other offerings, the priests would take a portion and eat 
for themselves and for them for their families and it was only lawful for a levite to eat a portion of the sacrifices mm -hmm. this is the first and only um sacrifice that was not eaten by the priests but they could keep the hide so that meant that they had to bring it, they had to prepare this offering. You know, they had to skin it because they can keep the hides. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I guess they can make clothes out of it for themselves and their families, or they could sell it, you know, if they wanted, you know, hard currency, if they, if they wanted money to, you know, or, or trade it for something that they wanted. And in the preparation of this, they prepared it with frankincense yeah. with fragrant fragrant oils okay now get this you not only participated in this offering giving it from your heart okay bringing it to the altar mm -hmm. skinning it you know the priest would you know prepare it and skin it and dress it you experienced this offering because from sundown to sunrise it would burn on the fire of the altar what does that mean remember it's got frankincense all of that uh, pleasant you mean the pleasant aroma going up yes exactly mm -hmm. all night long this aroma this fragrant sacrifice you know what what do various scriptures say let my prayers praises and supplications be like a fragrant you know be you know be like a burnt offering to you O lord so you experience this the senses, the, the nose, you know, the olfactory senses were activated. And they say that the olfactory senses are the best, it is the best way to stimulate various emotions and memories. Smell does something to the brain. Yeah. It has an ex a very profound and powerful effect yeah. in stimulating the brain, in cleansing, in, you know, in doing something cathartic. Okay. Cleansing to the emotions, which would then prevent sickness and disease aromatherapy is happening here with fragrance fragrance yeah, frankincense, frankincense and fragrance. aromatherapy mm -hmm. is going on so now you have to study well what does frankincense do how does frankincense affect the body how does it affect the mind how does it affect the emotions exactly how does it heal the body I I didn't even do any research on the frankincense I should have frankincense aromatherapy is going on it's purifying the priest and all those, you know, that smell is going to go throughout the camp. One thing about smell is that it permeates everything. It gets into, you know, into the hair of women. It gets into everybody's clothes. You know, and they were supposed to wear their white linen when they handled these things. So that white linen was always smelling like frankincense 
and the other spices. Maybe yeah. What it pulls up on the web about frankincense on the spiritual, metaphysical um, response, or how does it help spiritually? It says the metaphysical properties of frankincense carries many intrinsic intellectual powers, and it says it's cognitive and cognitive. Yeah, isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So it says um, it's very popular, of course, in traditional religious and spiritual ceremonies. It has a relentless insistence on, this, like, I don't know, just the characteristics. It says it has a relentless insistence on independence, tolerance for adversity, and it encourages freedom of expression and clarity. Well. You know, I, I really latch on to, you know, intellectual and cognitive abilities yeah. that it enhances. And it increases your patience, oh, yeah. you know, to endure hard times, which really is saying it helps to increase faith. It enhances faith. It works on your emotions. It works on the brain's intellect and cognitive abilities. Mm. Again, from, from the neck up, neurological. Wow. And it, there's an emotional component. Head and heart connection again and because it's a sacrifice because it's an offering that the people had to bring the heart from the heart again head and heart connection yeah that's a lot of cool stuff the channels of the brain talking about it in the rest in the research and the study it does you, you, it does all kind of things to the brain mm -hmm. okay antidepressant oh Okay. Mm -hmm. Helps relieve anxiety and depression. Helps relieve anxiety and depression. Yeah. Mama. Head and heart. Yeah. Head and heart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for it pulling. It's shown to reduce heart rate, which is, of course, anxiety related. Mm -hmm. Heart rate shown to reduce heart rate and high blood pressure. Oh, boy. <laughs> Prevent stroke. Right. Neurological issues, all, you know, all those things, all those things are going on. And it burned on the altar all night oh. from sundown mm. to sunup. So every day while people were asleep, this smell, this aroma, is going throughout the camp. Yeah. While people are sleeping, nice. they're receiving I'm doing that tonight. this aromatherapy. <laughs> I'm putting some frankincense in the fuser tonight. I don't have any anxiety or depression, but. Hey, but it just helps reduce stress. Yeah, it reduces stress. Absolutely. You don't have to have anxiety right it, is, it, it's, it still just makes you it makes you feel good yeah we do that during our sound baths okay yep it helps drop you out you know i'm not explaining this but i i explain this every time we do a sound bath it helps you drop out of gamma waves okay sound in the beta then in the alpha and then theta and delta and when you drop into alpha brain waves and below, that promotes healing. That promotes visions. Yeah. And it, oh my goodness, it, all night, all night. That's special. That's special. And the priest had to keep that fire going, so there's going to be a lingering and a hint of this even during the day. Mm-hmm. You know, we here in the Denver, Colorado area, and there's a big Purina dog child or cat yeah, child, you know, yeah. pet child Purina's factory. 
Yeah. And the people that live <laughs> anywhere near that plant are smelling this stuff all day long and all night. Right. Yeah. Imagine instead of smelling, and we smell it whenever, because it's right next to the expressway, and every time you get near it, you go, okay, we're getting near the, we're getting near the dog child factory. Imagine if instead of that, you were smelling frankincense and other spices. Wouldn't that be lovely? No. Oh, boy. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, you should start putting some frankincense on every night. Yeah. It's expensive. Got to order some. Okay. <laughs> we're not out. Oh, how much do we have? But we're going we're gonna to need some more if you're going to start putting yeah. it in the diffusers yeah. uh, at night. But that's what's going on. All of that is happening. My goodness. Okay? Mm -hmm. All of these neurological issues are being dealt with. All of these heart, head issues, emotional, intellect is being enhanced, cognitive abilities are being enhanced. Look at what's going on here. Ain't God something? Hey. <laughs> Ain't God something? He's intensely purposeful. Ain't God something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, as I said, it deals with the heart. You have, you know, it's a command. If the people didn't bring the offering, they couldn't burn the sacrifice that heals them. Mm -hmm. So now we see the connection in the natural and in the physical and how it transcends into the spiritual and emotional, the keeping of the commandment mm -hmm. and what, is, what it does. This, you know, this is absolutely uh, awesome, very awesome. Yeah. You know, I was... Um, I almost kind of forgot that I, I got an audience out there. But we were talking to my brother-in-law last night. And he said he's going to Ukraine. He was a medic in the army. And he says he's putting a team together to go help the people in Ukraine. And I told him, don't go. I said, how does your wife feel about that? Because he just... He got married less than, uh, he got married last summer, so it hasn't even been a year. And I didn't think about it until this morning when I woke up. Um, the Bible exempts you from military service for the first year, uh, for the entire first year after you're married. You can't be drafted into the army until uh, You've been married for one year if you're married. You know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to stay home, as the Bible says, and cheer up his wife. Okay. Bond. But they've been together for a long time anyway. Yeah. Well, we won't talk about that. Okay. okay. But, you know, I just kind of think he should be. I said, well, you know, pray about it. You know, make sure you are hearing from God about it and everything. And then he said to me he was going to go. And he said, why don't you put on your big boy pants and come with me? And I thought this morning, I said to myself, I don't think they make diapers my size. <laughs> he said, put on my big boy pants and go to Ukraine. I, 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 don't, I don't think they make diapers my size. I, I'm going to have to call him and tell him that. I'm say, hey, hey, sorry, I can't, I can't go with you. Yeah. Okay. So good for him. You know, God is using him. He's a doer. He's an active. Very, very. He's God, got he can't sit. Place. He can't sit still. He's that type of guy. He needs. He needs a new project all the time. You know, that's how he is. Um, but as I've been meditating on this tour portion all day today uh, and last night. It came to me, you know, that, wow, you know, they could really use me in Ukraine. They could, 
imagine if this uh, teaching was translated into the Ukrainian language. What are they talking about on the news every day? What the people are going through. How sad they are. How depressed they are. How this is taking a toll on them. How brave they are for enduring all of this. Yeah. What if they had my teaching on what to meditate on? You know, by meditating on this Torah portion, this Torah portion, just looking at it in Hebrew, don't have to know what the words mean, don't know have, don't even have to know how to pronounce it, but just meditating on it with the proper consciousness, mm -hmm. meditating on that Torah from right to left, it will reduce stress. Everything that you said that frankincense does in the natural meditating on this Torah portion mm -hmm. will do in the spiritual and in the natural also. Right. Right. So this is a Torah portion that will reduce stress, reduce anxiety, reduce blood pressure, high blood pressure, and all the benefits of that. And let's say that, you know, the people of Ukraine meditated on all the, the previous 24 Torah portions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and since this deals with the ears, right. you know, there are, part of our training is, you know, is in auricular therapy. Sister Leslie and I are, I, you know, uh, students of Oriental Medicine, you know, and the ear, the outside of the ear, the rim and everything in here, the ear lobe and all this structure in there corresponds to every point of your body. We have been taught how to map out every point in you. I can treat using a point in your ear. I can treat any specific vertebrae in your spine. If I want to zoom in on C7 or T12 or L4, I can, I can treat it by stimulating that point in your ear. And I can stimulate that point either with needles, yep. essential oils, like frankincense, myrrh, and others, mm -hmm. with a laser light, yeah. okay, laser, with what we call an ear seed, where we put a little, what is it, a chaos seed, and um, mm -hmm. stick it on your ear in that point, and when you sleep, it irritates or stimulates that point. Mm -hmm. Or I can use tuning forks. and put the vibration there and treat any part of your body, bar none. And then listening to various vibrations will treat your internal injuries also. Now, if you get hit with shrapnel, I'm not your man. <laughs> Unless, you know, we're not your team. You're, you're going to need a medic. You're going to need my brother-in-law or a surgeon. But we certainly can help it heal. Sure. Heal quicker and faster and prevent infection. That's right. There is something called the NADA protocol where there are certain points that you stimulate in order to reduce stress. And Doctors without borders travel with acupuncturists. There is acupuncturists without borders too. And they travel as an attachment with doctors without borders. And they go to, in this country, they go in, um, in other countries, but especially in this country, they go to disaster areas 
where people just lost everything because of a tornado, a flood, a wildfire, uh, maybe a, a gas explosion, whatever. Do you know how much stress that is? I don't care if you got insurance or not. Imagine losing Everything. all of your pictures of yourself, your brothers and sisters, your father and mother, grandparents, everything. Imagine losing all that. Imagine losing everything you own. What kind of anxiety and stress and depression does a person go through if that happens to them? Don't know. It's immense. Absolutely. It's immense. It, it's absolutely awful just to think about. I can't even begin to imagine what it must feel like. Sure. Right. And I haven't, I, I don't know if anybody um, has done any studies on increased incidence of disease of disaster victims. There's got to be. It's got, you know, uh, if you're a pre-diabetic, it's got to, you know, make you a full-blown diabetic, that type of stress. And by using the NADA protocol, you can reduce that stress and prevent, help prevent the onset of many diseases. There you go. Many, uh, and it's numerous, numerous, many numerous diseases can be prevented with the NADA protocol. One thing, you, you know, if people in a disaster situation, if they drink, you know they're going to drink more. They're going to smoke more cigarettes. Right. They're going to use more oxycodone. Well, okay. Right. Illicit drug. Drug use and all of that's going to go up. Everything is going to increase. We know that from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stress that the pandemic placed on Absolutely people. Absolutely, we saw it. Absolutely, You know, increase, increase suicide, increase depression. Every, no one. I don't. I shouldn't say no one, but I'm, I haven't seen the studies on the increase in disease of disaster victims, dis disaster survivors. I know I know it's it, it happens. And so acupuncturists travel with doctors without borders and they treat people using the NADA protocol. The other thing about the NADA protocol, we call it auricular acupuncture, auricular therapy. It helps people break addictions to drugs and alcohol. It was actually introduced to this country by the Black Panthers to help members of the black community kick heroin. Members of the Black Panthers actually went to China and learned this and brought it back to America and helped people in the black community kick their heroin addiction. And from then on, it the use of it expanded. If you're into rap music, you've heard about Tupac Shakur. The man that he would call his stepfather was in the Black Panthers. He was one of the men who went to China and brought this back. Really? Yep. Tupac Shakur's uh, stepfather. Okay. So, like I said, imagine if the people of Ukraine could avail themselves of my ministry. You know, that's, that's one of our goals, worldwide health care. To teach people how they can heal themselves. 
Because, you know, right now they're trying to get medicine in. What medicine are they going to give to people to reduce stress? Yeah. They need to be meditating on these scriptures, on these uh, the first verse verse of these Torah portions. They need to be listening to my recordings, or I should say our recordings, from our sound bath. Yeah. So that they can drop out of, you know, mm-hmm. gamma in the beta, then in the alpha, then theta and delta. Now, you've heard me say this before. There's a saying in Oriental medicine. The inferior physician, the inferior physician waits for disease to occur and then tries to treat it. The superior physician prevents disease from happening. Our ministry not only treats disease that has already occurred, but helps prevent disease from happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you get no glory when, when, you know, if I'm treating you, if you're under my regular care, or, you know, when I say my regular care, the care of this ministry, if you're following this ministry, and following the practices and suggestions of this ministry, you're going to prevent disease. How do you know that you prevented disease? You don't. <laughs> it never happened. You, you're walking around with your chest stuck out. I don't get sick. I never get sick. I don't need blah, 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 blah. Hmm. You know, and you don't give credit where credit is due, okay? But if you follow this ministry, we will not only cure disease or help you fight disease, I should say. You have to be careful what you say for legal reasons today. We will not, on, we will not only help you fight disease, okay, and bring about better health, we will also help prevent disease. Right. All sickness and disease results from a spiritual deficit that moves into an emotional problem and then finally manifests in the physical body. Right. Well, this, this Torah portion is very powerful. Very, very powerful. These last seven combined with this one is absolute awesome, just absolutely awesome healing contained in this first two verses of this Torah Torah portion. Mm -hmm. But what's what's the key component? Let's not forget Terumah. Terumah. Corbinat and the pain of your tithes. Donations, sacrifices, and tithes Mm -hmm. is also a part of it as well. And I'm going to kind of end with an announcement here. I'd like to sit here and carry on about this. But, you know, I, I mentioned Ukraine, and I've been talking about Ukraine uh, probably the last two or three tour portions uh, in reference to um, spiritual warfare. How Putin massed his troops on the borders before he invaded. And that's and how what we're doing here during these two months of Adar in this leap year is amassing our troops Mm -hmm. on the borders of Satan. And we plan to attack Nissan 1. That's next Friday. Next Friday at 7 o'clock we invade. We're going in. Remember I've told you 
A healing is an invasion of hell. We're going to invade hell. The same way Putin invaded Ukraine, we're going to storm and blow down the gates of hell. One week from today, beginning at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. And ain't a thing he can do about it. I've been telling you that this is a month for provision. Mm -hmm. We had been asked, you know, this is a slow time of the year from, for the appraisal business, for, uh, res, you know, for real estate appraisers. And we needed X amount of, of appraisal assignments every week in order to have, you know, order to pay our bills and uh, just, you know, really keep our head above water. And these past two months, we've not only gotten the provision that we've needed for sustaining us, but we've gotten extra in order to wage war. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And even today and yesterday, we had we, we reached our quota. We reached it. I said, oh, praise God, we got it. During a slow time, when a lot of other appraisers don't have enough, we have enough and then some. And we got an extra order. We thought it had passed us by. All of a sudden, we looked up and they had a sign an extra order to us. And we said, oh, okay, and, and a nice fee with it. Then we got a new client. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, they gave us several hundred dollars more than what some of our old clients were paying for the same thing. Seven hundred dollars more? Several. Oh, several. Okay depending on which client you want to compare it to. Okay, yeah. You know, uh, several hundred dollars more. We were like, what? We said we only wanted to do this much. We only need this much because we need time to minister and, and to study for school and, and everything else. But the Lord said, no, nah, I'm not only going to give you one extra. I'm going to give you two extra. And... The one, one of the, the extra ones is going to pay several hundred dollars more than what you're used to getting. And then the other one that's extra, you're not going to have to do as much work. It's not going to take as much time to do as, you know, you normally spend. It'll be less money, but it'll be far less work and stress. And then today, another one came. So now, wow, you know, we're going, ooh, gee whiz, okay, that's good. Right before, right before the end of Adar, we get like a, a boost, we get like a shot in the arm mm -hmm. so that we can bless others. You know, so we can give to other ministries around the world, literally around the world in other countries mm -hmm. that need help so that they can wage war. Help them wage, you know, help them wage war yeah. as well as us. You know, so we've, you know, we've got that going on, but Remember, we're, we're, we're massing our forces. We're getting ready to storm the gates of hell. Yeah, and God is okay. Yeah, we got provision. I'm, I'm going to end with this, I promise you. The Holy Spirit gave me a vision. We are going to have a healing retreat. In, uh, in October, during the Feast of Tabernacles, during Sukkot. We're talking. I've been, I've been talking, uh, negotiating um, with the resort 
in the mountains for a cabin. I don't know what size uh, I'm going to get, but we're thinking um, maybe somewhere between one that will hold between 10 and 20 people. And we're going to minister to them every day during the Feast of Tabernacles. And when I say minister, not sit around and preach. We're going to be doing sound therapy. We're going to be doing crystal bowl, uh, our, our sound bath. If any of you who've ever come to our sound baths or heard, a, you know, a, just a sample of them on the Internet and on Facebook, we're going to be doing that every single day, live and in person, to the people who attend. We're also going to be doing gong baths, something we haven't done before. You know, a sound bath just using the gongs, not the crystal singing bowls, but the gongs. Then we're going to be doing vibrational therapy. Well, we'll take the Tibetan bowls, place them on people, and the vibration will go directly into the body. That's fantastic, believe me. Mm -hmm. You've seen examples uh, on our Facebook page when we do that with people. We're going to be doing that. And we're going to be doing tuning, you know, along with that tuning fork therapy where we can point in on a specific point, acupuncture point, or part of the body with various frequencies. We'll be using the prophetic and astrology and medical astrology to heal people. We're going to place those who come, they'll be on a vegan diet for the entire seven days, they're going to feel much better. Yeah. This vegan diet, we're going to we're going to put some oomph into it. I'm talking with uh, someone who was a part of used to uh, be a part of our ministry when we were in Shreveport. A wonderful young man. He's a vegan Cajun. Chef. Hmm. You won't miss the meat in terms of flavor, I guarantee you. So we're making making arrangements with him. Uh, another woman who was a part of our ministry and became a good friend of ours when we were in Shreveport, um, Karen, Sister Carolyn Freeman, who does color and aura therapy. She can see your aura. She can hook you up to a machine that will project your aura and you can see the colors and how they change with things. And she can read your aura. She can see uh, health problems and emotional problems in your aura before it gets into your body, before it moves from your aura to your chakras and from your chakras into your your body, your physical body. Mm-hmm. She, we've already talked to her. She's agreed to come. So you're going to have, every day you're going to have a sound bath. Every day you're going to have a gong bath. Every day you're going to have vibrational therapy with the Tibetan bowls and tuning forks. Every day you're going to have counseling. You're going to be eating good fruits and vegetables, drinking juice and vegetable and fruit smoothies for at least seven days. And the reason why I said at least seven days, the Feast of Tabernacles begins on the 15th of Tishri and ends on the 21st of Tishri, seven straight days. And then the 27th of Tishri is a Shabbat. It's the beginning of of the first Torah portion. You know, we we would have come full circle. And so I would rather people, you know, stay for eight days 
And we do the same thing on, on, you know, on that Shabbat. That, you know, that, you know, just really, you know, uh, because it's during a feast day, healing is already exponentially magnified. During the, you know, during the Feast of Tabernacles, during Sukkot. Then you stay one more day to take advantage of the first Torah portion. And the energy that's available on that day. So now you're at eight days. Then I would like for uh, folks to stay one day after the Shabbat because it's Simchat Torah. Right. Dancing with the Torah scroll. Dance. Joy. Right. That's healing. So now you're talking about nine straight days of therapy at a time in the cosmos, a time in the universe where healing is exponentially magnified. Whoa! Yeah. So that's nine days. You know, you check out on the ninth day, maybe that evening, or, you know, the next day, sometime, you know, um, in the morning, afternoon to get your plane, or if you drove, you know, to drive back. And then, okay, you have to be there for Nissan 15 for the start of everything. I'm going to try to have it where you come in and check in on the 14th so that you're already there when, you know, so you get the full Torah uh, portion, or the, you know, the full effect of the 15th of Tishri. You check in on the 14th, mm -hmm. and then that evening, the 15th begins, because the day begins at sundown, biblically. Mm -hmm. So you check in uh, and register on the 14th, and then that evening, the healing conference and the everything begins. You know, this is for anybody with a body. Anybody who has a mind and a body. You don't have to be sick to take advantage of this. If you are struggling with something, I don't care if it's corns to cancer, then this is for you. I don't care if you have an emotional issue or physical issue. Mm -hmm. This is for you. This one's for you. So now we're talking about seven, eight, nine, ten days. And we'll be we'll all be we'll be in a cabin. The food will be prepared. Uh, fresh every day, three meals, breakfast, lunch, and you know, and dinner. Uh, we're we're going to be doing so many things: uh, t meditation, tai chi, bongwa, qigong, which is a form of energy healing. It's a form of um, oriental medicine. All of that to keep the chakras open and spinning properly and in balance. Clear out the auras. Okay? Deliverance if needed. Or as always needed. Okay? But um, all, all the full force and effect of the Holy Spirit. And it's all biblically based. All biblically based. It is going to be a fantastic time in the Spirit. I'm going to get back to you next week with the prices. And we're, you know, through our text to donate number and PayPal or whatever, we're going to have it set up where you can you can do a payment plan 
You can pay all at once and reserve your spot, but you can also have a payment plan where, you know, just a small amount will come out of your account every month until, you know, it's paid. So, you know, you don't have to wait until, um, I believe that's, uh, like I, I was saying, Nissan 15, but that's actually October 8th in the Gregorian calendar. October 8th. You said Nissan, you mean Tishri. Tishri, excuse me. Yeah. I was saying Tishri 15, right. um, but I think uh, Tishri 14 corresponds to October 8th. October 8th to October 18th. I believe what, that's what it is. Is that correct on the Gregorian calendar? It's, co it's close. I, I, I might be off a day, but I'll have the exact days and times yeah. um, and the amount for, for you um, next Shabbat. I should, ha I should have all that and everything. But for you, I, missed, I mentioned Sister Carolyn Freeman doing the, uh, the color therapy and the, you know, the aura consultation, all of that's included, you know, the meals are included in there, lodging and meals and everything's included. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give a shout out to, you know, Brother Oliver Cowthorn of Shreveport, Louisiana, you know, Chef Oliver, he's fantastic, fantastic young brother uh, filled with the spirit, uh, you know, and oh man. He, he, you know, food is, is his passion, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he's, um, he's a believer as well, as well as Sister Carolyn, Sister Freeman. And so you be, it, it is just going to be an awesome time in the spirit, an awesome time of fellowship. Imagine being with people of you know, of a like mind, of faith. Nobody's saying, what you doing with that stuff? You know, all of that. Yeah, some of you may think this is a drawback and some of you may think it's fantastic, but your cell phones won't work up in there, yeah. in the mountains. So we've done, uh, for other groups, we've done, was it two retreats from or, or three for, for Girl Trip that we, you know, before the pan before the pandemic, uh, two okay. So we, we've been up there two times, and the cell phones don't work. You know, no TV, no cell phones, but you're gonna have plenty to do. Believe me, you will not you will not be bored. It is it is just awesome. What's what's going on there? And it's run by the YMCA. It's it's a a resort campus, a campus. They have a cafeteria, but you don't want to eat in the cafeteria, I don't think. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, you know, our cabin will have kitchen facilities. We're gonna prepare our own food and everything. But there's horseback riding, you know, swimming pool, hor um, rock climbing. You know, you can rent mountain bikes if you want to go mountain bike riding. Plenty of uh, trails to hike into the mountains in. There's uh, a lake on the main road coming into town and people kind of flock around that lake because the elk come to that lake. They just relax and water themselves in the lake. You, herds of elk. So you can absorb, you can not absorb, you can observe wildlife. I mean, there's, you know, little deer bouncing around, you know, all over the place, you know, plenty of nature, sunlight, mountain, fresh air. We're going to have star parties in the evening yeah. where we'll get the telescope out and look at the stars yeah. Yeah. that affect us yeah. and have discussions on what's going on in the universe spiritually because of the stars are in this position or that position. Uh, we'll do that every night, weather permitting, you know, if it's not raining or uh, cloudy, you know, you have to, there's no noise pollution, not noise, there's no light pollution 
because you're not near a, a, a big town, you know, with all the lights of the town interfering with the light of the stars. So you, if it's a clear night, you'll be able to see them. The mountain sky, a starry sky, absolutely beautiful thing to see. So, uh, it, it, people, it's, it's just going to be awesome. You know, but space is going to be limited. So, you know, get in touch with us. We're going to start making announcements this week. And definitely, uh, like I say, by next Friday, uh, we're going to have all of the details available for you. Um, actually, next Thursday, uh, next, yeah, um, Next, it will be, it will, because this is the 22nd, next Friday, you know, the last, the last Shabbat of Adar 2, of 2 Adar. Mm -hmm. So, tell your friends, if you don't think you can make it or want to make it, tell somebody, you know, this, this, I'm so excited about this, I can't wait, I can't wait. Okay. It, it, it is just going to be a wonderful time with the Lord, a wonderful time of fellowship, and a wonderful time of healing. That's right. You know, we're not going to get together and just shake, rattle, and roll <laughs> like some Pentecostals might do. And might do. You're going to be healed. Mm -hmm. You're going to be healed, and we're going to teach you how to keep that healing. We may look into some things uh, where, you know, for those who can't make it, they can watch over the Internet certain uh, aspects of the, uh, the conference. They won't be able to see everything, uh, but certain aspects they'll be able, you know, to take part in, um, you know, in Zoom rooms and things like that. So, but, you know... You want to be there. Believe me, you want to be there. I want to be there. I want somebody, you know, I always complain, you know, I really don't get the benefit, of, the full benefit of this ministry because I'm, you know, Lord Sister God. Leslie and I uh, are playing the bowls all the time. Yeah. We get a benefit from that, being there and hearing that. Lord, but I've been to one sound bath. It was given by another church in Tulsa. And I went so deep. They woke me up. Everybody was already out in the hall. Mm -hmm. And then they woke me up. I mean, <laughs> I was knocked out. Everybody had gotten up. They were mingling in the hall, and I was still under. Mm -hmm. and I guess they sort of said, somebody go wake that boy up. The janitor's going to be here to lock up in a minute. You know, I was out. And, uh, ooh, one of these, uh, I'm going to have to train, have to get me some disciples, some Talmudim, and train them how to do this so they can, so that I can get a sound bath and some, some treatments, you know. Sister Leslie and I can't, you can't be the only ones. Uh, but we need your donations, we need your the terrama. So that we can keep doing things like this. Like I said, um, the world needs what we are doing. It may be coming a time where the availability of medicine and other things might be scarce for certain periods of time. You know, there, there has to be a reason that the Lord is preparing us has prepared us in this. As far as we know, we're the only one doing, it might be somebody who, uh, in the kingdom who is doing maybe one aspect of what we do, but I haven't run into anybody who's doing everything that we're doing. And the Lord basically has been preparing, been preparing us for this for almost 30 years. You know, 
one thing is for sure, you know, we need our own building. We want to buy some land in the mountains, erect cabins where people can come and stay and be healed and we can do our praise and worship. We can worship where we want to, when we want to, as long as we want to. That's one thing that's going to be good about this retreat. We'll be able to do all of that for as long as we want during the time that it's supposed to be done. That's one thing. We, that's one reason why we're going, doing things uh, virtually now and over the internet because we can do it at the time it's supposed to be done. When we were, you know, having events uh, live, it's great to be there live, and I really miss you guys. Right. And you've told us how you missed us during the pandemic. But we can't take full effect, full advantage of what God has intended this ministry to be. Just holding live events when the various venues say we can do it for as long as they say we can do it. And it's certainly not cost effective. Mm -hmm. Very draining uh, financially. And we, you, you're not getting the most, you know, you're not getting the full benefit of it. Also, you know, you, you've given us testimonies. We have them on our website of, of the fantastic benefits that uh, many of you have received. But there has been no one who has received the benefits, the full effect of our ministry because they haven't, we haven't been able to do it on the Shabbat, on the feast days. We're always operating on some other day outside of, oh boy, outside of the anointing. It, it's still an anointed time, but I can, I can just imagine uh, what's going to happen when we're doing things fully in line with the Word of God. Fully aligned. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we. Something else. Well, stay tuned for more. Shabbat Shalom. And may the blessings of our risen Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, be upon you. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Get excited. It's coming one more week. Let's go.